By determining which side of the brain is primarily responsible for identifying faces, okay, ready? Dr. Zydell believes he may be on the first step toward understanding where creative inspiration arises. Creativity, it ready? appears, is directly linked to a physical reaction within the brain. We know the damage to either side of the brain will de decrease your creativity enormously. After right hemisphere damage, you will perhaps not be able to see the whole gestalt, the spatial orientation very well. After left hemisphere damage, you will perhaps not get all the details right. So I would say that the evidence so far is that really both hemispheres are very important for coordinated activity. How do you measure creativity? More importantly, how do you tap it? Dr. Betty Edwards, by teaching pupils to look at and draw pictures upside down, has enabled non-art students to utilize untapped portions of their brains and to become now, accomplished you know, you artists. Upside down, you, you no longer can view the drawing as, say, a man uh, sitting in a chair wearing glasses and so on, that that verbal knowledge becomes suppressed. As you look at the lines, I want you to try not to name things. When you come to parts that you can name, the H-A-N-D-S, try not to think to yourself in terms of words, but simply uh, copy off the lines just as you see them. Part of my work is based on a study that I did um, in which half the students were presented with the Picasso drawing right side up and told to copy it. The other half of the students were presented with the same drawing upside down and asked to copy it. And the results of that experiment uh, showed that there was a significant difference illogically that the upside down drawings were better than the drawings done right side up. Now this goes against common sense, doesn't it? The hypothesis of that study was that um, uh, upside down, the, our normal way of regarding visual information, coding it into uh, words, uh, recognizing parts, symbolizing, is shut off that part of our brain will not deal with upside down information. Upside down, the brain has, is forced to process the information in a different way. By using Dr. Edwards' method, it seems possible to unlock a creative area of the brain previously ignored. Dr. Thelma Moss, a professor at UCLA, has studied the powers of the mind. She believes that psychokinesis the ability to move objects with brain waves is very real. Let's see if we can try to define what psychokinesis is. Let's call it PK for short because it's simpler and easier. PK, for whatever fantastic processes are involved, is the ability for somebody, just by a look of the eye or something that emanates from his hands, the ability for that person to move objects without touching them. Some of the early best work comes out of the Soviet Union. There's a lady there, her name is Madame Kulagana, and when this power is working in her, she can simply stare at a box of matches that have been scattered on a table, concentrate on them, and you can see the whole group of matches as if they were one, magnetized together, moving sometimes away from her, sometimes toward her, and something in her brain makes this occur. When we try to figure out what psychokinesis is, what is it that moves objects at a distance, we can say that it may be an energy that comes from the body that we are not yet, I underline the word yet, not yet able to harness. It will perhaps require years of study by brain researchers before we will be able to understand and harness the true potential of the brain. Professor William Tiller of Stanford University has extensively studied the mind and its potential. I think that if we work at tapping our brain power, and really work at it, I think the, the results will be absolutely phenomenal. I, my own feeling is that we use a very small portion of our latent abilities, but if we focus on them, I suspect that the new man, that is the man, the new man would begin to perceive at and function at five dimensional and six dimensional levels of the universe compared to present man functioning at a four-dimensional level. And I think that the new man, or the new humanity, will be as far beyond 
present man as present man is beyond Neanderthal man. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena. In search of cameras are traveling the world, seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.